More of the night he came home. This is your spooky spot on NECA Toys Halloween 2 Retro Cloth Michael Myers. Based on his appearance in the classic 1981 sequel, Michael Myers stands 8 inches tall and comes complete with knife, scalpel, syringe, hammer, as well as an alternate hand and head. Highly detailed and fully posable with tailored coveralls costume, clamshell packaging with brand new art courtesy of Jason Edmondson. During the month of Spottober. No, that's not actually a correct month. If you look on the calendar, it's October right now. It's just something I like to tack on at the beginning of the month in this channel. And it's, I think it's clever. Probably people would disagree with me. But during the month of Spottober here on this channel, what I like to always do is look at stuff that's current and out right now. If you guys are looking to pick these up for yourself. Or I like to go back and look at either vintage toys or sometimes even go back and look at figures that I looked at years before. Case in point, the retro cloth here, Michael Myers from Halloween 2, is a figure, in fact, I did look at years ago, and I thought it would be a good time to dust off the proverbial dust on this guy and have a look at him again. And for comparisons, we can move this guy over, and we can bring in a figure that we also just recently had a look at again, and that is the ultimate Michael Myers from Halloween 2. You know, I thought there would have been a span of time, the gap of time between the first time I had a look at these figures and the time that I'm looking at them right now, that... Kind of in the middle of things, I would have just written these figures off as being older figures with slightly outdated head sculpts and outdated paint. And actually, you know, when we looked at the Ultimate Michael Myers from Halloween 2, if you watched the review of that, thank you for those that did, I actually still think that it's a, it's a decent figure. Is it outdated a little bit by its paint? Yes. I don't think it's the head sculpt so much, but I think the paint job is sort of where I feel Halloween 2's Ultimate Michael Myers sort of under delivers and I'm sure that's going to be improved upon when we get the release of the Sam Loomis Michael Myers 2 pack which NECA toys have announced and also shown images of and I can't wait for that but you know in that same way when we looked at the ultimate Michael Myers that probably the same feelings I will have about the retro cloth release of Michael Myers sort of just dismissing him as being an older toy but you know he has positive points that I'll hopefully cover off in this review one of which I feel is the best thing about this figure over the ultimate release is a much better paint job to the mask. You'll see more on us on that in a second. Before doing any comparisons though, we can talk a little bit about the accessories that come include with retro cloth, Michael Myers and sadly some sad news to report. I think the time from talking about those gaps of time, the time from the last time I looked at the Michael Myers retro cloth figure to the time that we're looking at him right now, I think somewhere in the middle of things, I may have, lost an accessory or two because i remember this guy actually coming in clue with a syringe a hammer a scalpel a knife and of course the alternate head and hand when in actual fact what i'm able to present to you the viewing audience right now is only a swappable head sculpt and the scalpel where those other two accessories have gone i have no idea but we're gonna we're gonna run with what we have right now and i can only offer up my sincerest of apologies the person that's behind the camera right now saying that Let's have a look at, though, at the accessories that I have available right now for the figure. And just assume, you know, if you want to go back and watch my original review of the guy, where you can actually see all the things that were actually packed along with him. A lot more than what we're having, having a look at right now. So he comes included with the syringe. And the syringe itself, as you can see, is like the one that he had in the movie. And I'm just going to grab the one that came included with the Ultimate release so you can see the difference between the two. Yes, there's going to be a size difference because, for obvious reasons, one is going to be a bigger figure than the other. The scalpels look to be identical, though. Maybe you could say that the Ultimate release was slightly shinier of a silver, but they seem to be very similar, if not exact, molds to one another. Just one is a little bit bigger than the other. Then I would be able to say, here he also comes included with this, he also comes included with this, he also can't do that. What I can, however, show you, though, is the swappable head sculpt that he comes included with. And I guess for that, before we kind of get down to doing that, let's actually pick the figure up and I'll show you what he looks like with the stock head sculpt. Now, I will say, and I might have even said that when we looked at the first the first time look at this retro cloth figure, I feel like the head sculpt is better than what we got with the Ultimate release. And it would make then sense, if I was going to talk about that, to bring in the Ultimate Michael Myers so you could see the difference between the two. The Michael Myers from the Ultimate release, I may have even said in his review, and I'll reiterate now, that the figure's paint looks very muddy, very gray, too dark of a color if you ask me. The retro cloth release... 
though his features are a little more smoothed out, I actually think the paint is a lot better on the Michael Myers, where you get those differences of whites and grays, especially you got the darker color there on his lips and his on his nose. I do think, like I said, even like the shape of the head sculpt seems to work better for the retro cloth release than it does on the ultimate Michael Myers, and I'm hoping able to do that proper justice in this review. Uh, one thing they also did with the retro cloth release is that there's that little needle mark on the side that the sewing needle got lodged into the side of Michael Myers' neck. It's still there. I'd like to see that they included that. And you can even see, like, there's discoloration on the lower end of his mask, as well as the area around his ears, where the paint would have started wearing off. I have also a little bit of paint that's actually, I think, since the time I've had the figure has started to flake off, or maybe it was even there the first time I had a look at it. But it looks aged, and that's the way that the Halloween 2 mask should look like. Because after all, it was stored in poor conditions, and there were a smoky home that caused like discoloration on the mask. And by the time they really were ready to wear the mask in the film, the mask was really in poor states. Uh, it does have still like that kind of rougher straw-like hair. And even has actually the little line on the back where the opening of the mask would be. I mean, again, if you ask me, if anyone is asking me, I would say like the retro cloth mask is the better of the two. Interesting thing enough as well, if you've seen my Halloween capsule review, they actually included one of the Michael Myers heads, at least as an empty mask, not one of which you could actually wear, but the mask was in one of those capsules. If you guys want to go back and check my review of the Halloween capsules, also produced by NECA Toys. You can also see there's the eyes on the very deep socketed openings of his mask. I don't know how close I can actually get in there, but yeah, you can see like there's his eyes in there as well. Too far back and too dark of an opening that you can really see them from a distance. And that's the way it should look like you wouldn't be. I really don't want to see his eyes through peering through the mask like this. He does come with two variations of his mask is this one. And of course, the one that has the blood trickling out from his eyes. I've noticed as well that the inside of his uh, the mask openings, at least where his eyes are, they're a little bit more shinier. I don't know if they've actually painted the, those in on red, in red, but it definitely seems like they're a little shinier than the eyes that are inside this mask here. To change out the head sculpt, it's fairly easy actually, you're just going to go ahead and hold onto the torso and just yank the head off the ball joint. Now the thing about these ball joints is that, especially on the older retro cloth figures, they're fairly large, so you have to put a little bit more effort to pull those and yank them off. Then we're going to take the bloodied head. We're going to put that back onto the ball joint. A little bit of pressure involved to push that back into place. There we go. And you've got the bloodied head sculpt. Now, of course, I would have to be able to bring in the ultimate released head sculpt so you could see the difference between the two. Paint marginally is better, I feel, on the retro cloth release than the original uh, ultimate release. Still not bad looking head sculpt, still after all these years from the time I looked at it last to the time I looked at it now, but I definitely still think after all these years that the retro cloth release is the better of the head sculpts of the two figures, at least of this one, and sort of the severed head I have sort of floating here in the frame. I really like this one quite a bit. Is there room for improvement? There's always room for improvement. It's not the ultimate looking head sculpt, pardon the pun, but I definitely think it's it's better it's better than the one that we got with the ultimate release. And you can see, again, there's the blood trickling down. There's a little bit actually red also on his nose too, and a little bit of additional red above on the eyebrow area. I'm not sure why those had to be there. But yeah, overall, it's not a bad looking head sculpt. As for the rest of Michael's body, now here's sort of where I feel like this figure comes up a little bit short, and I almost feel like the ultimate has done a little bit of a better job with it. The coloring of the costume, the coveralls that he's wearing, is too blue. This is something also that NECA Toys did with the Roy, the Friday 13th Part 5, 5 Retro Cloth Roy, is that they felt the need, all well, even back then, most people would have just assumed that it was blue. Instead of giving Roy the more teal-colored costume, they actually gave him a blue outfit. And they've sort of done the same thing we hear with Halloween 2 Michael's, Michael Myers. I mean, if you compare it to the Ultimate release, I feel like the Ultimate actually did a better job of getting a closer color to the coveralls that he had in the film. It's kind of more that off-greenish gray color that he has in the movie. It certainly isn't the dark blue that we're getting here with the Retro Cloth release. It's a very torn and tattered looking costume. And while it doesn't have bullet holes anywhere on the back, it certainly has entry wounds here on the front. If we were to count these out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
Apparently not Michael got shot six times, though Loomis will tell you he shot him six times. And though he didn't get shot seven times, like it would show in the opener of Halloween 2, in actual fact, it looks like he got shot even more times, unless those are additional bullet wounds that he got later into Halloween 2. If you want to see what he looks like, by the way, we can unvelcro the front of it. And basically what you're seeing inside, which is actually kind of interesting the way they've done this, is they've given him the body, but it looks like they've painted the bullet wounds while the costume was still on the figure, resulting in blood underneath. Unless it was just serving as an Easter egg, where you'd be able to open up the coveralls and actually see that he did have wounds inflicted to his body. Kind of weird the way they've done that. You can see as well, Michael's got a very muscular body. This is, by the way, a newer retro cloth body. So not only does he have the articulation in the torso, but he does also have articulation in the ankles. I'm so glad to see that they used the newer uh, bodies for this particular Michael Myers, as opposed to the older ones. Uh, yeah, so the, the costume isn't quite the right color. I mean, I would have gone probably closer to being like this greenish gray that they went with with the Ultimate release. But it's nice to see at least Michael Myers wearing a real cloth outfit. The outfit type of material that they used is similar to kind of like a canvas. You can see it's a very textured material. Stitching is pretty good on this, very large pockets. Because of the body that they've also used, it results in the head looking a lot bigger um, proportionally to the rest of his body. And sometimes with retro cloth figures, the head ultimately does look a little larger when you compare it to the rest of the body, but it's not terrible, right? It, you know, if, if you like the retro cloth figure line, then you're not probably going to be bothered by the fact that Michael has an oversized melon on the top of his shoulders. It doesn't certainly bother me because I'm a big fan of collecting the, the retro cloth figures, whether it be Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, or even, uh, say, the likes of Freddy Krueger. He does have pockets on the backs, so I guess if you want to store something in there, you can certainly do that. And then we can just lift up the pant legs to reveal not only socks, but I'm guessing they probably didn't paint these to look like socks, but more or less like boots. And then, of course, he's also got the black shoes as well. And so happy to see that they actually used the new articulation on these. So he does actually have the ankle pivot, where the older retro cloth figures would have only had the hinges back and forth. This Michael at least benefits from having this going on here. Now let's tackle the articulation on Michael Myers. Obvious places, we'll start with the head, and I've decided to keep the bloodied eyes in place because that's my favorite of the two head sculpts. Um, the head is already on a ball joint, we've established that. But, you know, surprisingly, for how long that neck is in his mask, he actually gets quite a range of motion. You can move the head down, you can move the head up, and of course the obvious is you can rotate the head all the way around. I don't even think I've had it all, all the way down on the ball joint. There we go. But you can also get that classic head tilt from Michael Myers, both sides too really nice how much you can actually get mileage wise out of the ball joint that they use for these necks then when it comes to the arms now the arms can come out at a 90 degree angle bend there's enough real fabric up the top here looseness at least clearance wise they can bring the arms out at 90 degrees they're a little bit more tighter though when you decide to bring the arms all the way around the more you rotate the arms this material is going to start tightening up around the shoulders so i probably would only say move the arms forward and move the arms back like this he does have a swivel in the bicep, not only a single hinge, but also a double hinge on the elbow. And the hands rotate all the way around with probably, as you can see there, a visible hinge that allows the hands to move back and forth. Because this figure also gets the newer retro cloth body, it means Michael also gets afforded the upper torso ball joints. Because the original retro cloth figures, I think, just had a straight swivel. Newer ones get that upper torso. That's so nice to see. The legs split out. Not by much, mind you, but enough that you can, I guess, give Michael somewhat of a split. You can bring the legs forward, bring the legs back, a swivel on the top of the thigh, double hinge on the knee, and he does have now the new articulation point, that ankle pivot, which if you remember, the original retro cloth figures only had just a straight hinge that allowed the feet to go back and forth this way, not this way. It always bothered me because like the feet never sat firmly and flat on a display shelf. With now the ankle pivot being brought into the new retro cloth bodies, it means that you can rectify and get the feet nice and flat when you put the figure on display. Speaking of putting the figure on display, let's put Michael Miles Myers down there for a second and once again bring in the ultimate release Michael Myers that we also looked at just recently. Two classic looking Michael Myers that I looked at years ago, I decided to dust back off and have a look at again. This all leading up to, again, that release, that eventual release that NECA Toys are going to be doing of the Ultimate Sam Loomis and Ultimate Michael Myers, which, again, I think is going to be using a lot of the body here and possibly a tweaking of the head sculpt here because I think that the retro cloth Michael Myers definitely has the better head sculpt of the two figures that we've gotten. 
Um, the only thing I would say of where the dated feel of this retro cloth Michaels comes into play and bringing kind of this one in as, as, a, as an example is the color of the coveralls are off. Uh, the color, the coveralls, the color of the coveralls probably should have been closer to like this color here, or maybe somewhere meeting in the middle, not this color, not this color, but something in the middle. Michael Myers probably shouldn't have had blue coveralls, something that they also did with the retro cloth Roy. They gave him the wrong color of coveralls. They should have been closer to kind of being that spruce green. And in fact, in both cases, the retro cloth Roy and the retro cloth Michael Myers have closer to having blue coveralls, which isn't quite right, but it's about the only thing that I would have changed to the retro cloth release of Michael Myers. The rest of the figure comes together rather nicely. I keep telling myself I need to really invest in one of those acrylic multi-compartment containers, something where I could keep all the extra accessories I get with these NECA figures and store them at least in one place where if I have to go looking for them after the fact, I know where they all are. Ultimate figures aren't so much the issue. They've never really been an issue because whatever figures I don't put on display, I just simply put back in the box with their, their plastic tra tray, and I just put all the accessories into those little designated slots. Retro cloth figures were a little bit different, though, They've changed things up now with the recent releases, but the old retro cloth figures, if you remember them, were just inside clear clamshells. And then you usually had the artwork that came included with it, which really, I still have the artwork, but I don't, for obvious reasons, have those clear clamshells anymore. So there's really no place to keep those accessories. I think why I'm saying that is because I put all the extra things that weren't being displayed with Michael Myers at the time that I once had him on on the shelf. I put everything else in a baggie, and sure enough, somewhere between the span of time that's elapsed, those extra accessories have gone missing, which really sucks. I'm sure if I go hunting, I could probably find if my cats haven't already found them. But it's a shame that Michael Myers here, I only have to really show you guys with the alternate head sculpt and the scalpel. Personally, the two favorite things I would have displayed with the figure anyways, and that's probably one of the reasons why all the other things went missing. It's a nice looking Michael Myers, still an improved looking Michael than the Ultimate release. Now, even though I did like the Ultimate released figure, I just recently did a re-review of them, if you guys haven't had a chance to check out the Ultimate Michael Myers from Halloween 2. But I think of the two, I, I, I like this one just a little bit more. Yes, the color of his coveralls is off. If you don't like the retro cloth figures, then whatever I'm telling you isn't going to matter. I can't sell you on the idea of retro cloth figures. Some people just prefer Ultimate figures over the retro cloth. I kind of like both. I kind of wish, again, like this head sculpt could have been on the original Ultimate release instead of the one that we got. But you got to believe, again, that that's going to get fixed when we get that eventual release of Sam Loomis and Michael Myers, which, again, I'm so super excited for. Are you guys, a, are you one? Uh, first of all, let's throw the question out there to the, you, the viewing audience. Do you guys collect retro cloth figures or do you prefer to collect the Ultimate figures or do you fall into Category C like me? You like to collect both. And then the second question is, which do you think is the better looking Michael Myers, the retro cloth release or the ultimate release? I always like reading your comments down below. If you guys are new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Turn as well the bell notification and make sure, yes, you're keeping your ghoulish peepers peeled because we will be looking at more spookerific reviews during the month of Spottober. I know I'm creating months again. It's not really. No, 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 no. Don't, don't go asking. Don't confirm with your, oh, he's asking his parents. No, the parents are just telling him there's no such thing as Spottober. Who's telling you there's such a thing as Spottober? Oh, he's pointing at the screen right now. Oh, he, oh he's selling me out. There's no month of Spottober, ladies and gentlemen. It's just something I made up for this month. But the point is, there's definitely going to be a lot more videos coming away. So as always, as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.